Hi there, I'm Vox Machina and today we're going to build together Crop Owl, which is a resonant low pass gate inspired and used with permission from the designs of Thomas White who was so kind enough to allow me to use this as an open source project. I'll leave the links down below which will take you to my GitHub where you can check all the manuals, the instructions and the list part that you need, so everything that you need to build your own. It's a low pass gate with resonance control. Uh, it can also act as a filter and as a VCA with resonance control as well. It has an input and an output, uh, CV, bipolar and unipolar inputs. And it also has this extra control to help time those lower frequencies in which the varactors are some difficult to deal with. So let's build it together. If this is your first time hearing about this model, maybe I'll recommend that you go on the links below to check what it is first. I'll leave a video with the sounds so that you can hear what it is and how it sounds first. But if you're here to build it, then we're gonna build it together. So I'll start with my uh, spreadsheet where I have my components, references, and some small notes to help me out. So we'll start with the resistors. Uh, if you've seen my previous videos, you'll see that I always start this way. Just had a little bit of a soldier on top first to hold the position. Then we turn around the PCB, cut halfway the legs, do the re remaining of the soldering to make them all equal and then we just trim it down and that's it. Once you've done this part, the resistors, which is always the mostly used component, everything else will become easier. So now we can turn the bar to the other way, we'll cut the legs halfway through, give some more space, more visibility, and then we solder down every pot again to make a strong connection, and then we're just gonna trim it down to make it clean for the next steps. I always try to start from the smaller components to the bigger ones, so next I'll do the capacitors, uh, same steps as always, but uh, only the resistors I will add solder on top, for every other component I will only add on the bottom, uh, I just hold them in place either with the other hand or with the help of some painter's tape that could be useful as well, but it's the same process again for all the other components. So now I'm going to solder down the sockets for the ICs. I always recommend that you use sockets. Uh, it's been very useful to me more than one time when I had some issues. Uh, for example, I mounted the IC in the reverse way <laughs> and then I could just take it off and put it in the correct way. So I always recommend you do this socket first and don't solder the ICs directly to the board. Next we'll do the remaining capacitors. So now we're just gonna add the user interface elements, which are the last ones that we are missing soldering here. Uh, we're gonna add them first without soldering. We're gonna add them and then add the front panel and connect them both and then we will solder. This way we make sure when we solder they are exactly in the right position where they should be. As you can see me here putting down the front panel uh, I'll make different adjustments uh, depending just to check if all the user interface elements are great. Uh, especially the big switch, it's, it's a bit tricky because it's a little bit, just a little bit higher than the other ones. So you want to make sure that you make some of them strongly connected on the beginning, like on opposite sides, like I'm doing here and just check if everything is okay. If all the legs on the back are out enough for you to solder them down, and then that should be okay. 
So all that you need to do now is turn it away to the back and solder all the components. And there you go, now we have the insert elements uh, soldered down so we can remove the face plate again because later on we still need to fit in the ICs on the sockets but it's good to go for now. So for the last part, which are the pins that will connect on the top and on the bottom to the second PCB, I will just pick up a, a slide row of these pins, cut them on the 10th uh, element, so because the PCB has 10 holes on the top and on the bottom, and uh, I'll solder them down at my own way, which I found it to be quite effective to make them all already in the good position from the beginning. You just have to insert them with careful and put them on top of the table or another surface and this way they will already be in the right position so I just soldered the counterpoint solder points so to, to, so to create a connection first and then I just check the position and if everything is okay I just solder all the points. So now we have our front PCB done, uh, it's looking good with the strong connections, we add the ICs only at the end, uh, yeah looking good from the back as well, so with the pin connections, so we're ready to start for the second PCB which is much simpler than this one. Mostly the second PCB will have the two vectorals and the power section. And here we basically do the same process that we did for the first bar. We start with the resistors, a little bit of solder on top, turn it around, cut it halfway the legs, solder the remaining, and trim them down and continue to capacitors. And it's the same flow as before. So here I will add the pins, the 10 pins, but the female version, so they can fit together on the other board. It's exactly the same process as I used before, I think it works well for me. Uh, insert the connectors without soldering, put them above the table together with the PCB on top, and that should give you the right good in position to start. Uh, solder the two counterpoints, the two most far away points from the connection, and then check if the position is okay. If everything is okay, just solder all the way. Now we're gonna solder this little tiny potentiometer which uh, is used for calibrating uh, later on the amount of dampening that goes into the cutoff. Uh, it's mounted as you can see in a vertical form so that can easily be accessed even when the model is connected. With a screwdriver from the top it's quite easy to make the calibration. This is the only calibration point that you have for this model. So now we're going to do the power connector, which is the only element that is soldered in reverse, meaning in the back of the panel of the PCB. Uh, just be extra careful because these are very close to each other and uh, just make sure in the end you don't have any short circuits going around. So now all that is remaining are the actual uh, vectorals. I recommend getting them from a trustable source. I have got them from Tonk UK uh, and they proved to be really, really good. Uh, specific, these ones have a very short attack or very short response, which I found it to be really perfect combination for this module. Uh, you can also make your own vectorals if you're trying to save some money. I'll, I'll probably leave some links in the description to show you how to build your own vectoral. A vectoral is basically a LED against a LED a light dependent resistor which will then becomes a variable uh, resistor. So to solder this down is quite easy if you use these factorals. Uh, just connect them on top and then make sure they are in a good position and solder them on the back. 
if you happen to use other kind of vectorals or your own custom made vectorals i mean just make sure you note down where the connections are to be so that then later on you don't have trouble figuring out for example if you make your own custom ones just write just right on top where is the plus connection for the led and that's enough that's basically what these have they have a plus indicating where is the positive with the led connection which uh, automatically serves as a position indicator and there you go as you can see the second board is very very simple to do very few components and we are done so now let's try to connect the two PCBs together, see how they fit. So let's combine the two PCBs now. Uh, hopefully the positions will be very easy to uh, match them together. And that's it, we have a model. And just missing the front panel which will connect. But because we already made sure it will connect properly, that will be really, really, really easy. Now it's time to add the ICs to the sockets. You need to bend them a little bit closer together to match the sockets holes, uh, but that's all. Pretty much all there is left to do is just fitting the ICs into the sockets. And it looks like we already have a module in our hand. It's just missing the front panel, uh, the cool part, so let's get to it. It's just screwing around because we already made sure this will connect really well with the holes, so nothing to it. I love the Davis knobs, so I'll give you my advice. As you can see here, it's a little bit weird or might look weird. I'm actually using the cutter as a base because you don't want these knobs touching the top of the inner potentiometer because otherwise they will not flow correctly. So just give a little bit of space between the bottom of the board and the knob itself and it will be perfectly. So there you go, now your model is ready. This is a simple build if you will, if you take some patience into it. Ah, uh, cool. So now let's play a little bit with it, let's see how it sounds. Don't forget, if you want to build your own resonant low-pass gate, which sounds amazing, just follow the links in the description. I have links for my GitHub repos where you can find all sorts of documentation and manuals to make it easier for you if you want to go on this adventure of building your own.